go. Okay. Well, this is the first video in a series. Uh, I'm getting ready to do a little steel surfing now that uh, I've had both of my COVID shots. You know, kind of missed out on a whole year of traveling last year. And, you know, I can't complain. We managed to survive uh, the pandemic so far with neither of us being infected. We've gotten our vaccinations. Uh, my son and his wife were the only ones of the family to get COVID and they seem to have survived without long-term effects. So, you know, life is pretty dang good. But at this age, I kind of feel badly about missing out on a year of perhaps some train hopping, steel surfing, as Buddy calls it. So, I'm getting ready to go on a bit of an extended hop this time. We'll see how far I go. But there's a couple things that I want to have happen. One, I want to lose a little weight during it. Two, I'm going to test my blood sugar along the way. I've had trouble controlling it recently. Even with almost a no-carb diet that I've gone back to, I seem to still be fairly high on the blood sugar, like 180 in that neighborhood. So, you know, a couple hours after eating. So I'm going to test it and see if a little exercise helps out. But we're going to document the beginning here. And so I am going to get on the scale. First off, and I'm going to weigh myself. And let me get that cap out of the way. It looks like dressed today with my shoes and everything. I've got a long sleeve t-shirt on, so I'm a little heavy in that regard. But fully clothed, dressed, we're looking at right at 235. Now I'm going to get all my gear on and we'll see just how much my pack and water and camera gear add to the total. Let me get that pack on first. And I can tell you right off the bat that my, uh, is that gonna get into focus? Or is that because I have my glasses and can't see? <laughs> I need to clean my glasses. Anyway, I can tell you this pack's heavier than I want it to be. But uh, I've got, you know, just starting out, your food's a little heavy. And uh, I've got stuff to where I can go quite a while without uh, needing replenishing. So with the pack on, it looks like... We are at 270, right at 270. Yeah, we'll call it 274. So basically, my pack has added about 40 pounds. So grand total with everything, water and everything, 290. So. I'm going to know what it's like to weigh 290 pounds starting out. That's with camera, water, everything. Well, that's Thank a... God you got yourself a little bit fit before you left. <laughs> you know I'm... what I mean? Yeah, I don't know that I did, but oh well. Well, you start eating low carb, you know. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see how this all shakes out. Well, I sacked out here for a little while under the bridge waiting. I'm just waiting for an eastbound train. So far, everything's been westbound. Pretty noisy under there when the cars go by, but 
apparently it didn't bother me too much because I fell asleep. <laughs> Got a good hour in. Let me go down and we're going to take a look at these tracks real quick. Lots of frack sand gets hauled on these lines and uh, you'll see piles of it where trains have sat for a while that weren't sealed properly for whatever reason. One thing that I wanted to look at, uh, there's an example of a big pile right there, but if you look at a rail, and I'll, I'll get a still picture too. When you look at these rails, I notice that there, the top of the rail has a bit of a curve to it. And so in other words, it's not perfectly flat across the top. It comes to a peak. And when you kind of look closer at it, you can see that there's only a certain amount of the rail that's worn heavily. So, the fact that the train wheels are also beveled a little bit, and the way that they ride on these rails makes me think there's very little actual contact between the steel on the train wheels and the steel on the rails. Pretty fascinating stuff to me. <laughs> yeah. Judging by the signal lights down there. I'm guessing that I'm looking east there. So I'm going to say the next train will be westbound as were the first two that were have come past here. And I bumped my head under this bridge twice now. The last one really hurt. I can see the signal light is flashing yellow on the main line. So that tells me there's probably a westbound train coming, which of course is what I've been waiting for. for sure. I went and got a cup of coffee though. Only only about a block or two down to the convenience store. So I thought why not? After my nap, a cup of coffee kind of hits the spot. Anyway, I'm going to get packed up and ready because I'm pretty sure that uh, I'll have something to ride here. Fingers crossed anyway. We'll see.
I'm gonna wait. Well, I'm still under under the bridge. It's about I don't know nine o'clock or so, something on that order, and. Uh, I'm still waiting on the right train to come rolling through, and by right, I really don't have a specific train. I just mean one that I can that I can ride. Uh, but I did notice the signal aspect is flashing yellow on the westbound side, meaning that the next train coming will be coming from the west. So I packed up my gear for a second time after I'd gotten comfortable here, and uh, I'm just waiting on that next train to roll in. Hopefully it won't be too much longer. Alrighty, it's been about an hour since that signal changed and I heard the train come coming from down there. At the same time, I got one coming from that direction. I hope this thing doesn't block me. Because there's two tracks down there. That would suck. And I'm too late to go run across the tracks now. Hopefully that other one's just working in the yard. But anyway. The real question now is, will this uh, train have, have any suitable cars to ride? I guess. We are going to find out here shortly. did one of those things where you're kind of damned for sure if you don't and maybe damned if you do 
I walked round trip about a mile carrying everything. So I know what it's like to be a 300 pound man or 290 pound man walking for a mile uh, looking for a DPU at the end of that auto rack. <laughs> there wasn't one. <laughs> Wasted effort. Oh well, back under the bridge waiting.
There's my ride right there from Portage to Chicago. It is very dirty. But that's why I wear coveralls. Anyway, that's a Canadian grainer. And that little hole. Right there, provided space inside so I was dry and out of the wind. Can't ask for a whole lot more than that, I guess. But anyway, step one is done. There's in the train, I'll just... I got off on this side so the cars driving by didn't see me. I might just lay down here and take a nap. So anyway, I uh, made it to Bensonville and hopped off the train. It's just right outside of the O'Hare Airport. Literally, the fence is right there behind me. But uh, I called Terry, let her know I'd made it to Chicago. And uh, the train then pulled on into the yard and uh, I was gonna walk to the road there and a railroad worker in a pickup truck on on the rails had pulled up and was measuring the rail on the track next to the train and of course he saw me and and told me that I better get out of there before the police came and uh, I let him know that I was I was definitely headed out and uh, but I did talk to him for just a second and kind of put him at ease and then we chatted for a while and he was impressed that I'd gotten off the train and he calmed down and wasn't uh, <laughs> you know too concerned anymore but anyway uh, there I was in Chicago. I made it. First ever freight hop to Chicago. Might have taken eight hours to get a train, but hey, you know, you don't get to control things when you're when you're uh, hopping freight trains. And I rode in comfort in terms of the weather because it rained pretty hard off and on, and it was cold, and so I can't complain. You know, made it where I where I intended to be, and then now I had to find my way to Willow Springs using Chicago's various transportation options, which I did and uh, follow along for the next episode and you'll find out what kind of challenges Willow Springs offered up. Uh, if you've ever watched Stove the Hobo videos, you'll know that uh, it's a challenge. And it was. <laughs> anyway, uh, take care and uh, stay tuned for Willow Springs. Bye-bye.